high school students from throughout New Zealand are in Wellington for the annual Youth Parliament. It's a proud moment for Dean Buckley. He's amongst the country's top students. Dean's profoundly deaf. He's struggled through his high school years. Finally, his talents recognised. As you can see, this is me. I'm Dean. When you see me on TV and you hear an interview about me, there are lots of things from my past, lots of problems I've had. But that doesn't mean I'm deaf. It doesn't mean I'm disabled. I'm me. I'm just me. Don't judge me because I already judge myself. Dean's in his senior year at Calston Boys High School in Auckland. At high school, my role is prefect. And I'm also on the board of trustees. I never thought I could do any of that. You know, I didn't think this would happen to me. I just want to show my school, my community, and basically everyone in the world what I can do. What you have to do is look just like Dean's studying maths, physics, geography can and English. He has an interpreter in the classroom, but his ability to take in what the teacher is saying relies on those interpreters. Sometimes I do get frustrated in school because it's difficult to focus on the teacher and the interpreter and my workload on my desk because what a hearing person can do is they can hear and write at the same time, whereas a deaf person can't. I have to either watch the interpreter or the teacher or watch my work. And so if I were to take notes, I would actually have to wait for the interpreter to stop signing and then write the notes and then go back to see what they're signing. And it's very hard for the interpreter to remember what has been said while I'm writing. As backup, Dean photographs the teacher's notes, downloading them onto his computer at home. So what happens when you have the word projected? Projected means it's going to be built. So it hasn't started yet. They plan for it. I have a regular interpreter there. Um, but I need an interpreter, I need a teacher with more understanding of a deaf, of deaf students, that they need to understand that our English is not the same as theirs, and that sometimes the interpreter's language isn't at the same level as mine, and so it does become a bit hard. So we do need interpret more skilled interpreters, skilled in English and maths, you know, um, and that would actually help understand help my understanding of the subjects Dean puts a lot of hours with his home he just wants to do so much with his life I just don't know how he's got the energy to do it I mean he'll be awake till three o'clock in the morning he's done a lot of all-nighters and literally falling asleep in class from just trying to you know trying to succeed on a normal school day, generally Dean comes home and goes to sleep and wakes up generally around 7 o'clock and then he's cracking into his homework and he does that day in, day out. Usually passes out with his laptop in front of him <laughs> and then wakes up next morning and the cycle starts again. So yeah, no, he's really driven, he just looks at something and decides he wants to do something and that's pretty much it really. I think it's because he's had to always fight for everything. He's, I mean, just to keep up with the mainstream students now, he has to work a hundred times harder than they do. Everyday things that we take for granted, he struggled with and he had to work extremely hard to get. From the day he was conceived, he has had an extremely hard life. These, these are all Dean's files. Dean was born deaf the result of Goldenhaar's syndrome, a rare congenital condition that often causes incomplete development of the eyes, ears, face and spine. 
For the first few months, it was in and out of hospital. He would catch anything that was in there. And he had pneumonia. They did some d different tests and found he had a heart murmur. He had two different ears. Um, one hadn't formed properly. He had a really heavy head. He couldn't hold his head up till he was six months old. He's had a ton of surgeries. He's been under anaesthetic so many times I couldn't even begin to tell you what they were all for anymore. Doctors attempted a cochlear implant, but have concluded Dean will never be able to hear. We used to have people staring at him all the time and he was aware of all that. And, and I think you have to have a pretty strong personality. You have to be able to let it go and not let it affect you. You know, I did have a problem with my body image, with my personality and how I learnt. You know, and now I just use it more. You know, I'm far more accepting of myself, of who I am. Because I always used to think people were judging me. You know, it just makes them fight even harder to want to be like everyone else. And I don't believe he should have to. If I want to change who I am, it's my choice. It means, uh, you know, you need to decide and do it yourself. If you want to change, if I want to change myself, it means I want to be a different person. And I'm not sure I want to be a different person. I want to show people that I accept who I am, that I'm a real person, that I'm Dean. I'm not wanting to change from being Dean. When he was 14, Dean's surgeons reconstructed his right ear. After the ear reconstruction, it, it didn't improve me at all. It's not what I meant. Um, If we change the ears, it wouldn't be such a huge change for me anymore. It would just change how I looked, and I realised I don't need to change how I looked, I'm still me. And I needed to learn to accept myself for myself. And I'm still learning how to accept myself. Yeah, I haven't gotten there just yet. Dean's part of a large family. There's five kids. It's not always easy to get your voice heard. Where's I put this? I don't wanna. Dean's dad learned sign language, and the kids have some ability to communicate with their brother. Like a lot of teenagers, Dean spends much of his time alone in his room. My family, brothers, sisters, mum and dad can all sign a little, but. It, it does become a bit of a hassle for them. Damien, the three-year-old, he'll go and then he'll sign and he'll move his fingers around. He'll go and say goodnight to Dean most nights and Dean ignores him, he'll say, Mum, I'm taking his computer off him if he doesn't say goodnight to me now. <laughs> He's very persistent and he'll sometimes go and stand in front of his TV or just, he'll just sit there or jump on his bed till he actually pays attention to him. Dean's mum taught him total communication, or TC. Because TC uses the structure of English grammar, she felt it would help with his written schoolwork. In TC, each English word has a corresponding sign. Total communication is basically there was a sign for every single word, and they don't have those signs. There were signs for it, at, the, and um, as, and they don't use those signs anymore. And he's and when you're not using those words to try and teach a deaf person how to read and write and where those words are meant to go in the sentence, it's very hard to explain it to them. And that city rail link is actually going to connect Kingsland through... At school, Albert's Dean school uses New Zealand Sign Language. So he finds himself juggling between both forms of communication, at school and home. If I signed at school like I signed at home, it wouldn't be easy to understand. A lot of the deaf people wouldn't quite catch it, so they'd expect me to change to sign language. So I changed the sign language so it's easier for the other deaf students in the class. I, I favour TC more and it's more of a mainstream communication. When it came time to write a speech for the annual Calston Deaf Education Competition, Dean opted to be controversial, speaking about the benefits of total communication over New Zealand Sign Language. Dean backed up his argument 
that deaf students need to understand English grammar. A few deaf people weren't happy about what he was saying. It was about total communication and it kind of proved what we've been doing at home. Good evening. So before I start, I just want to make an announcement. My presentation may offend a few people, but that's not my intention. But there's been a lot of complaints about TC. Some say it's boring, it's tiresome, repetitive, and frustrating. And I have to be honest, I agree. But if you look at those students, their literacy levels are also a lot higher than they are today. He just stood up there and the confidence just kind of oozed out of him and we were just about in tears just watching him. It was just another side to Dean we hadn't seen. And Adam and I sat there and we were just so proud of, you know, of who he'd become and, and that he could get up there and, and, you know, talk about something and just be so positive. First, in the New Zealand Sign Language Research section, Dean Buckley. Last year's judge was Member of Parliament Mojo Mathers. She awarded Dean a first prize. What impressed me about Dean's speech was that he was confident and delivered it confidently, that he had a clear concept that he wanted to get it across and a definite viewpoint, and that he communicated that viewpoint very effectively. Months later, when Mojo was asked to nominate a student for the yeah. annual youth parliament, she remembered Dean's speech. But there's uh, something that happened that made you think, ah, I'm interested in politics. Mm, not really because of you. <laughs> because before I thought, you know, deaf people, they couldn't be involved in politics. I thought, you know, it's something deaf people can't do. Then I saw you and, you know, you were in Parliament and I thought, wow, deaf people can do. And so I decided, you know, I'm going to start I'm very happy politics. about that. When, when the first time I actually heard that New Zealand's first deaf MP, I looked at her and I thought, so? So what? You know, and there she is. I thought, you know, I, I didn't really think much of it, but then later on I heard you know, I saw it in the newspaper, I saw it on website, and I heard quite a lot about it and what she's done. It was only then that I realised... that there, I realised that Mojo is actually changing the world. Mr Speaker, I made the point yesterday that funding... Mojo's not a big user of sign language. She was brought up to lip read and communicate orally. It's incredibly important that people with disabilities are directly represented in Parliament. Our involvement um, actually reminds people that the decisions that they're making in law are going to affect people in all these ways. The Parliament side. needs to represent the diversity of the population that is out there, and disabled people are part of that mix, and it should become a lot easier for them to be involved. We have an incredibly low level of voter participation and engagement from young people in politics. And Youth Parliament is one way for us to try to remedy that. Welcome everybody to this um, Green Youth Parliament caucus meeting. So um, we'll just go around the circle very quickly um, to introduce ourselves and we'd love to hear who you are and where you're from. Um, kia ora, kia ora koutou katoa. I'm Mitiria Ture, I'm the Green Party co-leader. Uh, kia ora guys, my name is Abbas. Uh, originally born in Afghanistan, uh, but I've uh, been living in Christchurch ever since. I'm representing uh, Ken Kennedy Graham. So yeah, that's me. Kia ora, I'm Dean. Um, I was born in Auckland. I am an Aucklander. <laughs> um, I am here representing Mojo Mathers. They do everything that 
we do as MPs. They get to participate in a select committee hearing, they get to vote on a piece of legislation in the House, they get to ask questions to ministers, real ministers answering the questions, and they get to participate in general debate in Parliament as well. Here, Mrs. Mojo's office. Yeah. So that's what. Nice chair. <laughs> yeah, MPs get special chairs. So one of the special things about Mojo's office is the division bell, and that flashes brightly when it's time for Mojo to go over to the house. Um, and one of the newest things she's got, which is really, really exciting, is she has a special phone. It brings up text for her. Now that we have that, Mojo is able to do phone interviews independently, which is great. The invite to attend Youth Parliament was huge, but equally daunting. All the incentives are here in the employer. Youth Parliament Select like Committee. Months, everyone wants to make their mark. Once again in his life, that, um, Dean needs to find a big bucket of courage. Plans, uh, to reduce that any further. I tried. Uh, I tried to kind of share some of my ideas, but I really struggled to explain myself. I, I, when the others were talking, I knew what I wanted to say, and it was all there in my head, but I just didn't know how to express it. Being confident enough to tackle challenges is new to Dean. For most of his life, the main thing Dean felt was isolation. He's always suffered low self-confidence. Last year, it wasn't easy. I was depressed, constantly worried, stressed. I felt alone. You know, I felt problems at home, communication barriers. I, I didn't have many friends, or n not many good friends, and I felt quite frustrated. When I went into school, it was just basically normal. I, I, I felt like I needed to hide who I was at school, like pretend I was fine. And when people would see me, I didn't look fine. I looked like I didn't want to show them my problems. I really hid it inside in the frustrations and the stress and depression, I kept that inside. I had a huge argument with my mum and my mum was actually a little bit scared of me. It felt like I wanted to punch people. Later on, I caused myself self-harm and ended up in the hospital. I. I felt like I had let my family down. I, I didn't realise that I shouldn't have done that. I, still to this day, I feel bad. To have him feel like he couldn't, um, didn't want to be here anymore, and he came and gave me a hug on his 18th birthday and he apologised to me. And that meant more to me than anything else, that he, you know, and for, Knowing that every day with him is just so precious and and he knows how much he means to us and it's changed him and it's made him want to be here, it's made him want to be happy. But there's another reason Dean's been so withdrawn. He came downstairs one day on Easter Sunday last year and said to, to him, can, we, can I talk to you and Dad? And I said, yeah, and he said to us, he said, I'm gay. And I said to him, how does that make you feel? I said, are you happy about that? And he goes, yes. And I said, well, we're happy too. And we both got up and gave him a hug. Be before that, uh, before I came out, I, I always felt blocked and private about it. I, 
I thought my parents maybe, you know, that they wouldn't really accept me. They would force me to change or be quote unquote normal. And, and I was lucky that they accepted me because when, when I told my parents, I had been hiding it for about five years. When I told my parents, they said, it's fine, it's not a problem. I, I, I didn't realize that I should have told them that earlier. I, I had been depressed and all that stress and depression suddenly vanished when I said that. Now I told them I was gay and they told me it's just normal. I'm normal. You know, I'm still human. For the first time he was himself and he would smile and he was a lot more relaxed and started go talking to his friends, communicating a lot more and, you know, socialising. He's just, he's just a lot happier. We've never actually seen him as happy as he has been, especially in the last few weeks. Dean likes being bossy. He loves being bossy, so he loves being, the fact that someone's actually listening to him and doing what he says. And Damien just loves, you know, the fact that he's getting attention. He just wants Dean's attention all the time. And, and he, he has a lot of respect here for Dean, even at such a young age. And the kids aspire to be more like him, especially after everything he's accomplished this year. You know, it's made my 12-year-old focus a lot more on schoolwork and because I've watched how much harder he's had to fight for everything. Today, Dean stands alongside some of the finest young speakers in the country as he delivers his first speech in Parliament. Mr Speaker, will the government make a commitment to reducing carbon emissions as has been done by countries such as Denmark, Norway and China? My question is to the Minister of Economic Development and asks, what does this government plan to do to reduce the number of New Zealanders permanently immigrating for higher wages and a better standard of living. If the national-led government wants to show the young people of New Zealand that they think their future is important, they should be keeping our state-owned assets state-owned. Young people do not want their future to be put off for sale. Uh, order. You are required to follow the correct protocol. Question number 16, Dean Buckley. Mr Speaker, my question is to the Minister of Finance. Why is government selling state assets rather than borrowing? And will the asset sales result in foreign ownership of shares that previously were owned by government? And today in the debating chamber, uh, when I stood up and asked my question, more professional in my delivery, so in a big arena there in the big debating chamber. Yeah, so it, was, it felt good. Dean's not the only deaf representative in this year's youth parliament. Hannah Deal is from Christchurch. She's representing Labour's spokesperson for disability issues, Ruth Dyson. I'm to go into the debating chamber and we're going to talk about... Uh, Sign language awareness is what I'm going to talk about within the community. I'm looking forward to listening to her actually. So really, she will be fine. You'll be fine. And I'm here to support you. Hannah Deal. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My name is Hannah and I've came, I'm going to be talking about the main issue in the community for deaf youth. New Zealand Sign Language is the third official language in New Zealand. Over 24,000 New Zealanders use sign language. It is very important for New Zealand youth to be aware of the deaf community. I hope some of you will like to learn New Zealand sign language and get to know a variety of different cultural elements. Remember that 
technology can assist communication between me and you. I am Hannah and I am deaf and I am proud of it. Order. Um, and I felt, you know, I don't want to go home now, I want to stay. I'm really enjoying it. I'm a completely different person now. The old Dean is gone. This is the new Dean you're looking at. Because, well, to be honest, it, it is the best year of the last 10 years. Because I've had a lot of support, I've made new friends. My parents have supported me a lot. And that's made me more confident. Yeah, 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 yeah.